So I've been wearing this same climb jacket for the last several summer riding seasons here in Texas. This is the climb Apex Air, which they no longer make. It's a discontinued model. But I think it's about time for a new summer riding jacket. So let me run over to my friends at Moto Liberty in Dallas and we'll see if they've got that new climb summer jacket in stock. Hold on, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So let's talk about riding gear this week on MC Rider. You know, over the years of riding, there are a few brands of gear that I've come to rely on. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that they're the best gear. You know, maybe they are, but in particular, these brands work for me. So I've had cheaper gear in the past that lasts one to three riding seasons before it starts looking pretty rough. And I've had some more expensive gear that seems to last a little longer and have a little more service life. I used to really like the Tourmaster riding jackets, and I still do. They're affordable, they offer good protection, and they fit me fairly well. But while the earlier jackets I had from Tourmaster lasted a while, the more recent Tourmaster purchases I've tried didn't make it through one riding season before I started having issues. Things like zipper failure, buttons or snaps or something that would come off on them. So that's why I decided to take a chance on the climb jacket that you saw earlier a few years ago and see if that increase in cost was worth the price. And for me, it was worth the investment. Climb fits me well, they're a well-made jacket, and it offers good protection, you know, really great protection with this new D30 armor that's in these jackets. Man, it's a whole lot thinner. It's a whole lot lighter. You hardly even notice that the uh, armor is in there so i upgraded the back protection in this one to something a little bit beefier but man all of this new armor it, it's got holes in it so it flows really well but it's lightweight and thin and still offers better protection than that older harder shell uh, armor that you find in a lot of le less expensive jackets but there's another thing that I really appreciate about Climb is they don't have all the zip-in liners that other jacket manufacturers use. It seems like I've got a whole pile of these liners that are sitting around from some jacket that I've lost track of which liner goes to which jacket. And I really need to just throw the whole bunch of liners away. So when I started writing that zip-in and zip-out liner seemed like a really good thing. Some, you know, some of them offered rain protection. Some of them were zip in to give you more protection in the winter. But in reality, I never used them. If it rained, I put a rain jacket over my riding gear. If it was cold, I'd end up putting a, you know, a liner underneath the jacket. And that was much easier than messing with all the zippers to get that liner in and out of the jacket. So if it's even colder, I'd wear a winter jacket. You know, I've come to find that there's no one jacket that will get you through all the riding seasons here in Texas. So I've got a summer jacket that I wear all the time. And I think you can see in the background there, I've got a winter jacket that's hanging up, you know, waiting for the fall winter riding season here in North Texas. So for me, those zip in liners were removed the day I brought the jacket home and never put back into the jacket. You know, Climb takes that layered, layered approach to riding. So there's not, you know, zippers in here to get a liner in and out if the jacket's too cold for the current conditions. They sell liners that can go underneath this, but you know, I've got a lot of stuff here at the house. So I don't have to buy that. And I just slide something underneath this jacket that gives me additional protection in the winter. And like I said, if it's raining, I put rain gear over the top of this. That works really well for me. You know, this system fits my style of riding and protection much better, and I don't have to mess with all those zippers getting those liners in and out. So I still don't have a climb winter jacket as my winter riding season's pretty short here in Texas, and I've been able to get away with a cheaper jacket, something I bought at the International Motorcycle Show a few years ago, and that gets me through the colder months here in North Texas. So this is not really a review of this climb jacket, but I can tell you that it works very well for me. You're here on MC Rider, I get a whole lot of questions about riding gear. It can be particularly confusing for new riders. Like people ask me which full face helmet is the best. So my answer is the one that offers you the level of protection that you're comfortable with, but even more important than that, one that fits you the best. So there is no one brand of anything that fits every rider the best. We all come in different shapes and sizes, 
And it's always best to be able to try something on before you buy it. And that's why I really appreciate the folks over at Moto Liberty. I mean, I literally drove over there, rode over there on the Goldwing in hopes that they would have this new climb summer jacket in stock. And sure enough, they had one in the back. They had just gotten in that day and it worked out just perfect for me. So it's great to have a shop that you can go to that's gonna have good quality gear in stock. So if you're in the DFW area or you happen to be passing through, stopping at Moto Liberty should be on your bucket list of things to do while you're here. It really is a good shop. And there's some people that have been working in there as long as I've been going to that store and they really are gear experts. I learn a lot about the gear I purchase every time I go in and visit them. So if going to Moto Liberty is not possible for you or a place like Moto Liberty and you need to shop online, make sure that they have a good return policy like Revzilla does. And it might take some trial and error for you to find a jacket that works for you. You know, something that you can buy, try it on, leave all the tags on there. And they've got a really good return policy. If it doesn't work out for you, you can exchange it. So my everyday riding gear, when I get on a motorcycle, without question, it's always a helmet, full face helmet. And I really like these showy helmets. I've been riding with this one for a little while now. Showies just always seem to fit me really well. They're a good quality name brand helmet. They work well and they have good quality in addition to uh, you know, looking good, I think, and fit me comfortably. In addition to that, I wear a riding jacket. That's part of my everyday riding apparel. Usually a climb because most of my seasons here are summer, but I'm planning on getting that winter climb jacket soon. In addition to the jacket and helmet, riding gloves. So you can see, man, these gloves are well loved. These are uh, Lee Park design. These are the Sumo gloves. And I have a link for that down there if you're interested in it. But I've really liked these gloves. I've got two pair of these and I've got a winter pair that Lee Park makes. And I've been riding with these for a few seasons now. These are really good quality gloves and you can't go wrong with those. I'll add some over the ankle shoes or boots and I'm done. I call it a day. That's my daily riding gear. If I'm gonna be on the motorcycle all day or if I'm on a longer trip, I'll add a pair of riding pants, but they're not a part of my daily riding apparel. So I've taken a fair amount of criticism from some of you guys online, from some of the all the gear, all the time absolutists that see me riding in jeans and have to chime in about, you know, the fact that I'd be better protected by wearing a pair of riding pants. So I hear you, and I do agree that there is some added protection from wearing riding pants, but when selecting gear, every rider needs to choose the level of protection that they're comfortable with and wear it every time they ride. For me, riding pants are not a true lifesaver. You know, a helmet's gonna save your life, but a riding pair of riding pants Probably not. Sure, riding pants will offer you some abrasion protection from road rash, but I've never seen a story where the headline was, if only he had been wearing his riding pants, he would have survived. But this, this, this is a lifesaver. This will save your life and studies have shown beyond the shadow of a doubt that riding with a full face helmet offers the rider the best chance of survival in a crash. So when it comes to protection for riding on a motorcycle, helmet is obviously first, but for me, this comes in second. And, you know, I never get on a motorcycle without a good pair of riding gloves. So why gloves? You know, when a rider is involved in a crash and they're about to fall, our natural instincts is just to put our hands out to protect ourselves and break that fall. And that's why for me, wearing a good pair of gloves that offer abrasion resistance, you can see, these gloves offer additional protection here in the palm where it's most likely to hit. And they're gonna protect you from abrasion if you go down and get your hands out. You might get a little more protection if you've got something with really hard armor in the knuckles and fingers, but the majority of the protection that gloves are offering you are abrasion resistance from that initial fall and getting your hands out you may get a little bit of extra protection from the armor, but you know, there's also studies that say those really hard armor can cut into your hand or actually break your hand if that comes down wrong on your hand. So I much prefer 
something like this that's got good abrasion resistance, and then it's got the additional soft uh, armor in the in knuckles and the fingers of the gloves that offer some additional protection, but it's primarily abrasion resistance. You know, the same can be said for a good riding jacket. It offers some protection for softer impacts, you know, and you're, it's got armor in the elbows and shoulders, and it's got some protection in the back pad, but primarily the purpose of a jacket, in my opinion, is for abrasion resistance. If you want true impact protection in a jacket, then you're probably looking at a jacket or a vest that's got airbags built into it. You know, airbags are truly a game changer when it comes to talking about impact protection on a motorcycle. If you need proof, just look at the impacts that a MotoGP riders face when they go out on the track. They'll get in some pretty nasty high sides and they walk away from it. And it's because they've got airbags built into that riding suit that they wear and they're starting to become available for motorcycle riders out on the street, but prices are not really decreasing. It's still a pretty expensive endeavor to get a jacket or a vest with the airbag built into it. You know, one, I don't really like the ones that tether to a motorcycle. It's got a tether that, you know, if you come off the motorcycle, then it deploys the airbags. The ones that have the you know, electronics built into it that detects a crash to me are better but that also increases the cost. I'll add to that over the ankle shoes or boots with a slip resistant sole, that'll protect you from burns and slips out on the pavement. And if you want more protection, you can get riding boots or shoes that are gonna offer some protection for your ankles, but those are usually at the cost of being uncomfortable, at least in my opinion, when you're off the bike and you're walking around. And lastly, riding pants will offer a little impact resistance in the hips and knees in particular, but again, they're primarily for abrasion resistance. So why do I personally draw the line at riding pants when I'm riding on a daily basis? Well, because for most of my riding around town, I'm going somewhere. I'm heading somewhere for lunch. I'm riding to a store. I used to commute every day when I was going to work, when I worked for the airlines on a motorcycle. For me, the hassle of getting in and out of riding pants when I arrived at my location was not worth the hassle in order to provide some abrasion resistance. You know, all of the other gear can easily be removed. I could get to work, pull the gloves, the helmet, jacket off, I'm ready to go. And I chose something in the shoes that I could be comfortable wearing all day so I didn't have to choose change those either. But on a daily basis, riding pants were not worth the trouble for me and I only wear them when I'm gonna be on the bike for an extended period of time and they don't get in the way of what I'm doing once I get to my destination. So if I'm going on a trip, I'll add a pair of riding pants for that added protection, plus I know I'm gonna be further away from home and I want all the protection I can get in those situations. So your preferences may be different and you may be willing to do everything that you can to protect every inch of skin anytime you're on a motorcycle. Well, my hat's off to you, I respect that. But in my years of riding, I've had one crash on the road. I was wearing my normal riding gear that I talked about, a helmet, jacket, gloves, boots. And I had a big gash across the helmet. So I got a big gash here and the slide marks down the face shield of that showy helmet that I was wearing. It did its job because I had no head injury at all from that accident. Had a rip in the elbow and some abrasion marks right here on the shoulder. So it did its job uh, for abrasion resistance, but I did break my collarbone on the impact. So abrasion protection, but not much impact protection from that jacket I was wearing. And I think that was a, uh, a Tour Master jacket I was wearing at that time. I did get a sizable knot on the side of my leg that a pair of riding pants would have protected me from, but of all the thousands of miles and years of riding, it's simply not worth it for me. I got one knot on my leg that healed up with no issues compared to the hassle of having to put on and take off a pair of riding pants every time I get on a motorcycle and arrive at my destination. So not every crash is the same, and I realize this, that it's a very small sample that I'm working with here. One crash as an example, but it is a level of protection and risk that I'm comfortable with. 
I am highly protected when I ride and the gear that I've chosen is something that I can live with and use on a daily basis. And without a doubt, if I'm without, out there with traffic, it's a full face helmet, it's a riding jacket, it's gloves, it's over the ankle shoes and a pair of jeans. And that's a level of protection that I'm comfortable with. So you may make other choices and I'll never meet you at a bike night and criticize your choice. However, if I see you out and you ask me for my opinion, I'm always willing to offer that up. And for me, rider protection begins with that good full face helmet. So always a good full face helmet for me and something that fits you comfortably, something that is preferably ECE or Snell certified, but something that fits you well, because if it doesn't fit you well, you're not gonna be comfortable in it. You're not gonna wear it on a daily basis. And then it becomes a hassle, like trying to deal with a pair of riding pants was for me. You know, freedom is a wonderful thing, and I always support your ability to make the best decision for you. Just make sure it's an informed decision and that's part of what I do here at MC Rider. It's part of my job is to help you be an informed rider. Till next week, guys, it's Ken with MC Rider, and I'll see you on the road.